Kia ora everyone and welcome back to Civilization 6. Today I'm going to take you through science. We're going to talk about how we can get the most science out of our cities, how we can move towards the scientific victory, and I'm going to cover a number of different things from wonders to buildings, adjacency bonuses and campuses, great people and more. So sit back and relax and let's help you up your science game. Number one seems fairly logical to begin with the campus. The campus is the main scientific district in Civilization VI. You can build campuses in all of your cities if you want to, and the really main thing to remember with a campus, unlike other districts, is that they receive their key adjacency bonuses from mountains and geothermal fissures. If that made absolutely no sense to you, that's fine. If that made the world of sense to you, that's also fine. Let me jump into Sparta's city details screen. You can see I have a campus built here, and this one is providing plus two science from the adjacent mountain tiles. In general, you want to try for plus three or more from your adjacency bonuses, okay? A plus three or a plus four, even greater still, you know, five, six, that's great. Anything less than three is not ideal. Unfortunately for me, this city, Sparta, really didn't have any great locations for a campus right from the get-go, so it was quite difficult. Uh, you can see um, at the moment, however, it's receiving a plus four adjacency bonus thanks to a cultural policy card. So that too is being doubled. More on cultural policy cards later. The key to get your science down is really to build as many of these campuses as you can, okay? In a Civ game, a Civ 6 game in particular, you're probably going to end up with say 10, 12, maybe even more cities. So it's really important and I generally try to get campuses in around 75% of them, providing it makes sense though. There are some places, and actually if you look at this empire as a whole, there are some cities and empires that just aren't built for campuses. So you might want to plan out your future settlements to really take advantage of spots where it might be great to build a campus. For example, where the city-state is built borders a lot of mountains. You would instantly receive an adjacency bonus for building your campus there from one to three mountains, let alone everything else that was around it, right? Uh, take a look in my capital city and you'll see that I have this campus down here which is providing plus four. Now that's much better and I've specifically built this in a geographical area that's not great for science and not great for campuses, but I've tried my best to really up the adjacency as much as I could. I built it next to the only mountain within range of Athens, right, so there was one. Next I built it next to two adjacent rainforests. You receive a minor adjacency bonus from rainforests if there are two, so I got that. I also received plus one from this government plaza and then another plus one for, an ad for adjacent districts, right? One, two adjacent districts. That brings me to my plus four and as you can see here in the city details that's currently being doubled by my policy card to plus eight, right? So these campuses, you can see at the moment I'm earning 48.9 science per turn and this campus alone is responsible for eight of that. Multiply that across 10 cities and you end up with really outstanding um, science production within all of your cities purely from the campuses alone. And as you scale it with things I'm about to talk about, you'll see it can get pretty nutty. Uh, one other thing to add, when you're establishing cities like this small one here, right, you're going to have quite a few of these. You can see it doesn't really have the population. I'm trying to build a campus, but it, it takes a long time. Don't forget, you can use your builders to chop tiles like these woods for example, that would otherwise serve no real purpose to me. I'm going to keep these rainforests for their adjacency bonus, but I'm not planning on using this wood tile, so I can remove feature down the bottom here with my builder, and that will provide an instant boost of 54 production, completing the campus for the city. So there's one way how you can really get on top of things within your cities uh, by using builders to advance the production of anything you're building, right? So I've just put the library into this campus, which will provide it with even more science. And I could, could use this builder to chop down some of these to remove this resource as well to provide some extra production if I was in a real hurry to get it online. Now, over the course of the game, that can pay off, particularly in these smaller cities, right? You can see this city now is it's a pretty, it's not a great campus, it was only receiving plus two, it was the best spot I could build it in in this city, but already it's receiving plus four from that adjacency bonus. Which brings me into my second point. Your policy cards and your civics tree cannot be ignored, okay? 
there are some key points along this tree that you're going to want to get. Um, first and foremost, the really big one comes from recorded history. Okay, This allows you to firstly build the Great Library. I'll touch more on wonders in a bit, but this is obviously a fantastic science wonder. Um, but it also enables this policy card, Natural Philosophy, plus 100% campus district adjacency. That was why my plus two campuses were providing four, my plus four campus was providing eight science. It's all thanks to this card, which in the early game, when you're only earning around 50 science, is a huge, huge benefit. Obviously, these policy cards will unlock different wonders throughout, so there may be different ones that are of interest to you, right, as you move through the civics tree. But in terms of policy cards and really key unlocks, the, unlighten the enlightenment is another huge one. Rationalism, right? Civ 5 players and Civ 6 players alike love rationalism. Extra science from campuses, plus 50% if your city is big, and plus 50% if a district has at least a plus four adjacency. So my plus four campuses are now 50% better still. That's why it's really crucial to try and get your adjacency bonus up as fast and as high as you can. And that's why it's key to build around those important natural features like mountains. There are many more key scientific uh, civics, policy cards and wonders throughout this tree. You really can't go wrong as you work your way through it to try and pick up as many things as you can. The next most obvious one comes from ideology. You get plus 100% commercial hub and harbour district adjacency bonuses. This economic union is the upgrade from our recorded history policy card. And obviously as you get through into the late game, if you're going for that sweet, sweet science victory, you're going to want to focus on some production as well. But there are lots of really power uh, really, really powerful policy cards here. International Space Agency is a great one, plus 5% science per city-state you're suzerain of, but there's heaps to choose from. All in all, my point here is do not, do not neglect your policy cards because they really, really matter within the civics tree and within your government as a whole, I would say, definitely. So really, really focus on them. Uh, the other thing that sort of ties into them is your governors. So I will just quickly touch on governors. The key governor for science uh, and culture actually is Pingala. Uh, once you promote him to researcher, you'll get plus one science for each citizen within your city. This will be really good, hopefully in a big capital city with a few wonders that are providing you with science which also combos quite nicely with the connoisseur promotion, which gives you culture per citizen. And as you work the, your way through, you can see space initiative for the final. So I would recommend that you grab Pingala for your science victory. Um, but in general, just that researcher science bonus is really, really massive for you. Ties in really well with uh, cultural policies and the government uh, program more broadly. Now, Let's just quickly remind you, this is what the government policy card screen looks like. And you can see already at this early stage in the game, this card is giving me eight science. That's massive. That's like a free double adjacency bonus campus, right? I've just doubled this campus with that card. Outstanding. Next up, and not to bombard you too much, but it is time that we talk great people. And if you are a great person, or you think I'm a good person, why not like this video and turn that like button blue? Thanks very much. Anyway, let's jump into claiming our great people, right? So great people, very, 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 very important. I'd recommend you keep an eye on the previously recruited uh, screen to see which ones you've missed out on and to become familiar with them. But of course, we're really interested in our great scientists, right? So you can see I can actually claim a great scientist here because I have so many campuses and libraries down. Those buildings are earning me great scientist points, which are adding up, and now I can claim this great scientist. This one provides plus one science in libraries and instantly builds a library within a campus district. That is insanely powerful, right? So... Obviously, I'm going to want to send this great scientist somewhere where I have a campus without a library to get maximum value. And as it would have it, we just chopped out this campus down here, so I know that this one is without a library. So I'm going to race my great scientist down here. It's only going to take a few turns for us to get there. Sleep that builder for the purpose of this demonstration video. <laughs> so we're going to run the scientist down, and what the scientist is going to do is actually buff 
everything. Every library that we have will receive plus one science. So you'll watch as we head into this turn, we are at 57 science. That's pretty good. Can't complain. Cannot complain at that. Now I'm going to activate this great scientist. It's going to instantly build a library in this city, completing it eight turns ahead of schedule. See ya. <laughs> Should have cancelled that. And it's going to give us an instant boost to all of our libraries plus one science in all of them, and you'll see our science instantly jumped up. Now it's important to remember that as the game goes on, these abilities will scale with policy cards and things will get really crazy. But if we jump back into the city, you can see now it's got its library built in it, which is providing plus three science, plus two, which is standard. And now for the rest of the game, plus one science for every extra library. Don't sleep on great people. Always be checking the great person screen, right? Just if you don't have the points to earn them, you can see I'm earning far more than any other player. So I should be able to sweep these up. You can also buy them with gold and faith. So do keep an eye on their abilities. This next one triggers the Eureka moment for mathematics and one other tech. Nowhere near as impactful as the guy I just got, but still pretty good. So I'll be keeping my eye on that very closely. Next up, let's talk wonders. There are wonders that provide specifically provide scientific bonuses, and there are others that can help your science or help you towards a scientific victory. You can see here in my capital, I built Itiminan... <laughs> Itiminan... Nikki, oh my goodness, nailed it, which provides plus two science and plus one production on all marsh tiles within my entire empire and one science in production on floodplains within the city. And you can see that already. You can see that these tiles, which are pretty decent food tiles, are now also providing me with a little bit of science. That's great for my science game. And of course, naturally, it provides plus two science and some adjacency bonuses if I want to sneak a uh, cultural district in the middle, right? So there's lots of benefits to Wonders. And I would really encourage you to, uh, the best way to view them is to go to the map tax down the bottom here, add attack, Choose a random spot on the map where you want to put a tack down, and then you can see every single wonder. You can also search for them in Civipedia or on the civics and tech trees, but this is a great way to just quickly flick through and see, okay, what are my key wonders here? Here are my five recommendations. It, the, <laughs> should I try to say it again? Let's not. This one is fantastic depending on your geography, also unlocked very early. A nice pickup. Colosseum, while it doesn't provide direct science, it does provide culture and amenities which can help you grow. A pretty good one to pick up. The Great Library and the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus are two hugely impactful ones. The Great Library will boost all of your early technologies and provide science and great scientist points as well as some nice cultural bonuses uh, and the museum of Halicarnassus, the mausoleum provides plus one science and other yields on all coastal si tiles within a city so great for coastal empires in particular as i scan through these like i say there are lots that are great for any kind of victory but some really specific sciencey ones as well this university right more science science from trade routes base science faith gold Ruhr Valley is another one if you're going for the scientific victory because you also need big production to get your spaceship online and traveling through time and space. So Ruhr Valley could be really good. Oxford University, another obvious one, right? 20% science and some free technologies and universities and so on and so forth. There are really, really a great deal of them. I would recommend that you pick up my key top five ones if you can, which are Etemenanaki, uh, next, I would probably get the Great Library and the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus. As I moved through into the later game, I'm a big fan of trade, and I don't mind having a few desert cities, so I quite like the University of Sankor. And then my last one in my top five, this is a really difficult decision. If you're going for the scientific victory, I'd actually say Ruhr Valley is the one to go for, but if you're more interested in just getting good science, you can't look past the Oxford University. Now, nah. last but not least in our wonderful scientific journey. We're going through everything we can to up our science. It's city-states. City-states are incredibly powerful for your science. You may remember when we were looking through the civics tree, we found, found some pretty impactful policies. In particular, 
in particular Lee, globalization, plus 5% science per city state you are a suzerain of, right? So you can actually leverage science off your city states by simply being suzerain of them. It gets even more impactful though when you start to look at some of these. When you go into the city states menu in the top right, you can see all city states. Now, in this case, I don't have access to any scientific ones, but I will throw them on screen now from a different game and you can see really powerful bonuses providing you with innate science production, providing you with a percentage share of their science, providing your libraries and scientific buildings with additional science generation. Seriously, focus on these city-states, even if you just touch the scientific ones. They can provide you with literally over a thousand science. I have seen and played games where I've got like 1,200, 1,500 science out of city-states alone, so do not sleep on them. Thank you very much for watching my Ultimate Civilization VI Science Guide. If you did enjoy it, please consider leaving that sweet, sweet like rating, and I'll catch you in the next one.